Guys, Ed Walters here. Welcome to the TaylorMade Performance Centre down here at Truffaut Golf Centre in Warrington. Today is Trackman Tuesday. It's episode two. We're talking all about loft on the driver, uh, what effects it has, uh, and whether or not it makes a real difference relative to a few other factors. Let's go and take a look. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start, we're going to hit three shots with each of the different lots that I'm going to set this driver to. So 9.5 and 1440 is the driver that I have at the moment. I'm going to start with it on the standard loft and then I'm going to move it to higher loft and then lower loft. So it'll play the three lofts will be 9.5, 11.5 and 7.5 degrees. What effect is that going to have? Does it have much effect? A lot of it is also going to depend on where the strike is on the face. So I've got the dry shampoo, we're going to spray the face. We'll put a fresh spray on it for each of the three shots that we hit. So let's make a start. I'm going to make the same swing I normally would with every one of these. We'll just see what effect loft really has on your driver. Okay, so here we go. Strike on that one, right out of the middle. Can't see the flight because it's right back into the sun. That was terrible. Big pull, low out the heel as well. <clears throat> right, let's change the loft down. We'll go down, 7.5 degrees. So two degrees lower, weight still in the same neutral places in the head. which is slightly different to where I would set them myself. I have the track here a little bit more towards the toe side because my miss strike would be actually more towards the toe. You know, I've hit one lot at the heel there, which is a bad swing. And this one fractionally further back as well, only a tiny little bit. Okay. Again, I'll take photographs of the individual impacts and then we'll have a look at the end of the grouping with regards to the uh, the effect, the numbers, the data. Okay. Okay, heel side again. Okay, so shot number two. Again, can't really see the ball flight of that one, but that was more central. Again, it's right into the sun, but it's also really close to the middle. Okay, so now I'm moving it from that lower 7.5 degree position. Starting to rain, probably seen a few sprinkles of water flying across the front of the screen there. Even though it's dead sunny on one side. Right, so higher loft, plus two degrees, 11.5 is where these next three are gonna be at. So, post your comments in the box below. What, I'd love to hear what loft you use and why you chose it, why you use it. Okay. And also in those comments, did you just go for that loft or did you get fitted and, and did you go through a testing process or was it just I want a ten and a half or I want a nine and a half or I want a I want a twelve? Just depends on what you see you want to get out of your shots before even knowing too much of the data side of it. Interesting to know. Post your comment in the box below. Again, it's right into the sun. The 
again. Can't see any of these golf balls flying. It's all about what Trackman sees regarding the change of our loft. Okay, so last one. And then we'll take the photograph and we'll start to analyze the data and see what effect loft on the driver really does have for you. Okay, I've missed that one out the toe. Okay, right, so let's take a look at the numbers and what that means, really. So if we start with, I'm going to put them just up here. Um, so if we start with the first loft, okay, so we started off um, with me hitting what is my normal loft. So if we look at the, the parameters that we're going to look at, club head speed is just there, just so you can see that I've hit every shot in sort of the same way. Um, angle of attack, dynamic loft, spin loft. Now, spin loft is the relationship between your, your attack angle, your, your angle of attack, and your dynamic loft through impact. Launch angle, spin rates, peak heights, land angles. I've put distance on there as well, just to show. So, shot number one, club head speed, 102 miles an hour. Attack angle of hitting it up nearly three degrees. So, dynamic loft of 18 degrees gives me the spin loft there of 50 is the gap between the two. So if you look at those there, that's the gap between my angle of attack and my dynamic loft. So I've got my dynamic loft, take away the angle of attack, that gives me the spin loft. Uh, launch angle, 16 and a half degrees, spinning at just over 2,000, peak height at nearly 103 feet. Um, and land angle at 38, nearly 39 degrees, total 270. Yeah, look at this try, hit it really, really solid. Uh, the next one, 99.8, so slower club head speed. The strike was, was very, very similar. Um, my angle attack, big change, seven degrees on the up. Dynamic loft was um, 16 and a half, so spin loft at nine, nine and a half. Launch angle 15, big change in the spin rate. So although it looks when we've seen the impact on the photograph that I've hit the same point, so I should hit the same shot. Um, how I've delivered the club, my angle of attack, my loft, my dynamic loft, my launch conditions have given me a big change in spin, massive change in peak height, massive change in land angle, massive change in distance. So on those two shots, the loft, what it says on the tin, 9.5 degrees, no effect on it whatsoever. That's down to me. The next one, 102.4, 2.9 angle of attack, dynamic loft 15.6, spin loft of 14, uh, launch angle 12 degrees. Again, the spin rate was quite high. We hit that one out the heel, so low and left impact. Um, peak height 114, land angle of 47, 48 degrees, and again 230. So I've hit three shots there. Two have come out in exactly the same distance with two totally different strikes from different launch conditions, different impacts, different speeds. Change in loft going down 7.5 degrees. So, shot number four, 100 uh, miles an hour club head speed. It hasn't picked up the attack angle. The strike wasn't uh, very good. The uh, dynamic loft was 15 degrees. So again, because we've not got attack angle, we can't read the spin loft. Uh, launch angle, 14 degrees. Spin rate, 2000. Peak height was lower at 80 feet. Land angle was, again, lot 33 because the, the peak height's lower, 262 distance wise. So the second shot with the, uh, the lower loft, 99 on the club head speed. Angle of attack three and a half, um, dynamic loft 13.8, so 10.3 on the spin loft, launch angle 12 degrees, spin rate 2100, um, peak height 74, land angle 31, 32, 269. So the correlation between, especially looking at these three here, in terms of the height in terms of how we see the shot, the peak of its trajectory is totally different than the peak of the first ones. Um, so the third shot with that one, 100 mile an hour, uh, angle of attack is six and a half degrees, down at loft is 16. Um, we've got uh, 9.6 there on our spin loft, launch angle 15, spin rate also of 1500, um, peak height of 87, land angle of 33 and then a distance total of 282. And that one was hit a little bit more solid. That was more out of the middle of the club face. Number seven, so 
maximum loft now we're looking at 11.5 degrees we have a um, 98 on our club head speed launch angle four and a half dynamic loft of 19.4 spin loft of 15 launch angle is 18 spin of 2077 um, now peak height has gone up and the land angle is a little bit steeper distance of 269 the big thing to see from there is that the loft again by having more loft isn't necessarily going to mean that you're going to create more spin it's all down to you shot number eight 101 miles an hour um, 42 on the angle of attack 19 on the dynamic loft so spin loft of 15 launch angle 17 2100 again on the spin 112 on the peak height land angle again 40 total distance 273 and then the last shot, right out the top part of the face, really high toe impact, 100 mile an hour on the club head swing, angle attack spin loft not going to be red, um, dynamic loft of 22, launch angle 19, spin off the charts because of whereabout it was impacted on the face, so the peak height again is also off the charts, land angle is super steep and the distance has gone nowhere. Um, so the conclusion is that the loft on the driver doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. It will have a difference in terms of how we feel, our confidence. It'll have a difference in terms of that peak heights, as you see there when I've hit those shots. The, you know, we've got a noticeable difference in the peak height with the lower loft. Um, we've got uh, a consistency with the higher loft, a little bit inconsistent with the um, the standard loft that I use, but again, that's down to me. That's down to my launch angle on shot number two has changed that dramatically. So again, it, it, it's all down to the individual. Um, on average, if, if I was hit to, to hit a lot of shots, I see more consistency in my peak height, my land angle from the 9.5, um, which is why I just keep it on that setting. Um, now, if you don't generate enough speed, um, or if your launch angle is negative, then loft will make a huge difference to you. Because if you're hitting down on it, then your dynamic loft is gonna be changed, your spin loft is gonna change. So it all is relative to the individual and not just oh, so-and-so uses a 10 and a half and his ball flight looks better than mine, so I need to change the loft. You need to make sure that you get fitted for your driver and you find out the reasons why each particular loft and center of gravity position in the head, shaft option, how they all fit and work to the best of your ability as an individual. Everybody's different. It's not just I need, I'm not hitting it high enough, I need a high loft. It's why are you not hitting it high enough and what characteristics from your parameters do you see and what patterns emerge. Guys, hopefully that helps. Post your comments in the box below. I know it was a bit long-winded in the, uh, the explanation there, but post your comments in the box below. Love to hear your thoughts, whether or not it makes sense to you if you have any other questions from this post a comment in there as well and i may then do another video to explain it a little bit more detail depending on the questions that come through uh, subscribe to the channel as always give it a thumbs up if you're liking the content don't forget sharing it around catch me on social networks links are in the description below I look forward to seeing you again next week for episode three track tuesday thanks for watching